Hello everyone and welcome to this YouTube playlist on creating a metadata driven processing framework for Azure Data Factory. In this video I want to talk very theoretically on why. Why do we need a metadata driven processing framework for Azure Data Factory at all? And the way I want to talk about answering that question is really just looking at the fundamental problem that we have in Data Factory and then talking about the solution being the framework and why that's important. So if we start with the problem and for the problem, I'm going to ask another question. That is how do we structure our Data Factory pipelines? Now to talk you through that problem, let's add a little bit of context. And what we can do is we can say that in our typical data warehouse type platform that we have in Azure, we would typically have a data lake. And the goal here is that we want to get our data from left to right. We want to take the raw data and maybe take it through a series of layers to, to enrich and to ultimately serve that data to our business users so they can consume it. You know, and the curation of that data is, is really just that data engineering operation that we need to happen. So hopefully that's a, a fairly common pattern. Now to accompany that data lake, we have another core service, our Azure Data Factory. And what I'm going to say is for this problem and, and for this argument and, and the question we're going to try and answer here is that we have three business processes. We'll keep it very simple. And those three business process, processes initially now represent three pipelines maybe within our data factory. And what we'll do is for those three pipelines, at each of the intersections between those layers of processing in our data lake, we perform some operations, some activity in data factory. So what I've got here in this slide is a copy from raw to cleaned, maybe some Databricks notebooks to do some transformation work from the clean layer to transformed. And then some Azure functions maybe that get us into that serving layer or that semantic model, whatever that may be. Now, what we can do is for those three business processes, we can use horizontal processing planes. We can say for that first business process, everything goes end to end in a job lot and, and that could work. That would be fine. And we could allow that to happen. But then we encounter a second problem that we have a dependency between those business processes. So suddenly where that dependency exists, those horizontal processing planes are no longer going to work because we can't just wait for, for one to finish before two starts if we have, uh, we have those dependencies. So what we could say is, well, if horizontal processing isn't going to work, let's look at maybe doing vertical processing planes. And we say, yes, we're going to take everything from raw to cleaned first, and we're going to wrap that in one pipeline that I've called pipeline A in this slide. And then we're going to do the same with everything for pipeline B and everything for C. So we've moved from that horizontal processing plane to vertical processing planes. Now that, that could be another workable solution for us. But history repeats itself. We have another dependency. This time the dependency exists between that first business process going from clean to transformed and that third business process maybe. So as you can now appreciate with that second dependency, a vertical processing setup is no longer going to work for us either. So what do we do? Well, we, we refactor our pipelines maybe, and this time we actually go really granular. And what we say is that for every single activity, we have a one-to-one -one relationship between that activity and the data factory pipeline. Now, if we do that, those dependency chains, wherever they may exist, they could be connected. They could work. Data factory will allow us to create that. And then what we could do is that for all those granular, you know, lowest level pipelines and operations, we wrap them in some sort of bootstrap pipeline. And then within that bootstrap pipeline, we do the connections and we get the behavior that we want for our processing. And Data Factory will allow us to create and drive that. Now, 
if we wanted to go a, a step further with that, we could say that where we don't have those dependencies, maybe we actually just want to group some of our operations together. So we could refactor once more and say that actually where the dependencies aren't applicable, I'm just going to group activities together and allow them to happen. So then they can happen in parallel within those sort of groupings of, of things that are going to occur. And what we could conclude from this is we could define some rules in our data factory that says for our green pipelines, the grandparent, that is going to bootstrap all processing. For our parent pipelines, we're going to consolidate work where no dependencies exist. And then for the blue ones, our child pipelines, those are going to be the, the lowest level operations where we have dependencies and where we need that granular control. Now, although this is a workable solution, here we're only talking about three business processes. And already this is turning into you know, a bit of a spider's web of things. And from an operational point of view, who knows what's happening where? And you know, is this really a, a workable solution in production? Is this an ideal scenario that we want to be in? And hopefully the answer is no. The other issue that we will encounter is that if we create this grandparent pipeline, we create the solution as I've drawn it here, we are going to hit another problem and another limitation within Azure Data Factory. And that limitation is very simply that you can only have 40 activities per pipeline. So if we have hundreds of business processes and we're you know, working to the set of guidelines of how we structure our pipelines, we're then quickly going to hit the actual hard limit within the service as well. So that is our problem. And hopefully that frames the problem, you know, looking at it in a few different ways of, of where we need to go and how that problem is really going to affect us and, and where we need to think about structuring our data factories. So let's turn our attention now to the solution. And for me, the solution to that problem is to use metadata. Use metadata to dynamically drive those pipelines that we have within our data factory. So why is this gonna help us? Well, let's explore this as a possible solution. Again, in a, a theoretical way. So we have our pipelines, we have our three business processes as we talked about before in the problem. But what I'm now going to do is I'm going to say that, yes, let's have those granular pipelines at the lowest level. Let's not worry about refactoring and, and grouping them together. Let's have a one-to-one -one between a data engineering operation or, or whatever it may be, and what I'm going to call now a worker pipeline. And then let's couple our data factory with a database where we can house that metadata. In my case, I would use an Azure SQL database for that, but as you prefer, you know. And what we can do in that metadata is create two tables or, you know, two lists, if you like. The first one would be what I'll call stages, and these are our stages of execution. And we would have another one for our pipelines. And what we can say is that where we have dependencies between our processes, they need to fall in separate execution stages. And those execution stages will happen sequentially. So stage one has to complete before stage two can occur. And that means that we can handle dependencies. So everything in number one runs and then number two can carry on because it knows that that first stage is completed with whatever it has upstream that it needs. We can then say that for our pipelines where we have them all registered in their lowest form, we could say that you know pipelines A, B, and C may be going to stage one, C, D, E may be going to stage two, etc. So we can use those two bits of metadata to then drive what we do. So we join those two tables together and we can then, of course, selectively set up how we want that to occur. So we say our stages happen in sequence, but then where we have those multiple pipelines within a stage, we can actually scale out. So we're not going to lose any parallelism here by having to chain things where the dependencies exist. 
we can allow those things to scale out as we wish within the execution stage. And there are then no interdependencies between those pipelines in that stage. And that sort of scaled out representation would now give us something that resembles this image. So executing sequentially or vertically, if you like, with our stages in green where dependencies exist, but then horizontally scaling out as well, where we have no interdependencies and those pipelines could run in parallel. And what we could also do is that we attach those workers to each one, as we've said, but there is one more problem that we need to address in doing this because the metadata that we've got does support our data factory and it does inform what we need data factory to do to, to address that sort of dependency problem. But there is now more a, a lower level problem itself with data factory that we need to think about. And that is that if our pipelines, our worker pipelines are going to be called, then you may think that, yes, that's fine. We could use the execute pipeline activity that exists within our data factory. But that execute activity, it needs to be hard coded with the child pipeline that we're going to call. So in the developer UI, you will not get the option to add dynamic content or to create an expression on that activity and define what pipeline we're going to hit, which means that we then can't dynamically drive this with some metadata. So what I'm saying is that we need to just rethink our solution at a slightly lower level. And where we've got that metadata and we've coupled our data factory with our SQL database, we just need to actually think more carefully about how those workers are now dynamically going to be called so we can use that metadata. Now, the way we could do that is by using our web activities and our web hook activities. And there's a, an excellent blog post from the, the Microsoft guys in the UK where they've detailed how you can do this, where you hit the Azure management API and it will allow you then to call that worker pipeline from within a, another one. So you effectively dynamically inject into that management API URL to then hit that pipeline you want. So that is one option, you could do that. Another option would be that you use a logic app. So you hit the logic app maybe with a, a URL and then you use the actions within the logic app that says go and execute a data factory pipeline. So effectively data factory is calling out the logic app, the logic app is coming back to the data factory. So that is another option. Option two, we could use logic apps as well. Or option three, which is my preference, that we now couple our data factory framework with Azure Functions as well. So it means that then we can hit an Azure Function, the Azure Function then goes and executes our worker pipeline. And that is in essence the, the definite, the end game or the solution that I would prefer to address that problem of how we structure our data factory pipelines. So we couple data factory with a SQL database, with Azure Functions, and then we use that environment, that solution to overcome that problem. I'll just leave you with one more thought as well, and that is that if we do decide to go down this route, and we do decide to create a framework, we then ultimately unlock a whole host of other capabilities and flexibility in how we actually do our processing because we now have the support of this framework and this wrapper around our data factory pipelines. That's it, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Join me again soon.